Hi guys, N0ECK and K0YNH here. Yeah, today we're going to build a multiple dipole array. Some people call it a fan dipole. It's basically just a long dipole for say 80 meters and then a shorter dipole say for 40 meters and so on and so forth until you've got all the bands you want for HF. I have one at home that was uh, built by Dan, AB0RE, for 80, 40, and 20 meters, and it worked really well, except it looked like a rope ladder on my roof, so my wife told me to take it down. Hence, I put up my doublet. We'll talk about that more later. But today, we're gonna build this dipole. Let's get to it. We use these plans on hamuniverse.com as a starting point, but there are a lot of other ideas for fan dipoles out there. It's as simple as cutting several wire dipoles for the bands you want and hooking them all up to a common feed point. The wires cut for that band show a 50 ohm match while the rest are too short or too long and show a higher impedance. Thanks to Kirchhoff's current law, the rest of the wires will also radiate, but not as efficiently. I think this is the reason why my 80-40-20 fan dipole outperformed my 135 foot doublet on 160 meters with a tuner. The first thing we will do is build a center insulator. We'll use some PVC caps, eye bolts, and a trusty SO239 connector. You could put a one-to-one -one ball in here, but it's probably not necessary. There are probably hundreds of different ways to make a center insulator out of commonly available materials. The most important thing is that it can take the strain from the wires and you can weatherproof your coax connection. How long are you going with this one? 65 feet. The next thing to do is cut the elements. We cut them extra long so we can trim them later. The longest wire will be on top and holds up the bottom wires through some spacers made from lightweight half inch CPVC. We tend to use number 14 stranded wire for semi-permanent antennas because it's strong and a little easier to work with than solid wire. A 100 foot tape measure is almost essential when building wire antennas for HF. It's flexible and doesn't have a spring retract mechanism to get in the way. When using it by myself, I tend to tie the end to the wire and then attach it to a tree or a fence post. After cutting, we tied the elements to the strain relief eye bolt and stripped back some of the insulation. I twisted them together with the wire from the SO239 and soldered the whole ball with a high power soldering iron. You'll need a big iron or a torch for this job because that's a lot of copper. Then cover the connection with the UV resistant material. We use some splicing tape and Super 33 electrical tape. The next step was to thread the wires through the spacers and secure them. We used some zip ties and electrical tape to keep the spacers from sliding down the wires. It's hard to get them positioned correctly without the wire hanging in the air, so we guessed. We used a 6 inch spacing. There's some argument about the spacing online, but that seemed to be a common value. So we built the fan dipole, wow this thing is a mess. So if you've got one of these, you might want to leave it up, but that's not what you're going to do. Well, we'll see. It, depending on how big of a pain in the butt it is, uh, you know, it is going to be up on a 40 foot tower and it's going to be on a lake property, so I don't really know if it's going to be cool to have it up and kind of in the view of the lake or not, but we'll see. Uh, whenever it comes time to actually getting it on the tower, getting it tuned, installed, we'll get that back to you eventually. Yep. We'll be back with the test and tune later. 7-3, join the resistance. Fantastic.